welcome to another installment of What Are We Renovating Today? Definitely kidding on that renovation portion. We are all done with that. No more walkthrough videos or anything like that. We are finally here to bring you our very first uh, full-blown bath and body care video of what we are making. So, are we going to be talking this whole video? There might be some voiceovers, but today we wanted to make something that was very near and dear to our hearts and something that we actually very first uh, created when we started doing our soap line. So for today, uh, you're going to be coming along with us as we show you how we make our French lavender body soap. July, if you are watching, we absolutely adore your molds. I think, oh gosh, this is where it's gonna get really hard. Steven knows all of the measurements. I just do the filling. So I wanna say that this is a seven pound loaf mold. I can get 22 to 23 bars out of it. It is, it is one of our absolutely favorite things. Um, essentially, when we did our rebrand, we based it off of this soap mold. Uh, we love our little tall and skinny. We have a nice little like, I was going to say flat top on it, but I think that's actually correct. So once we got this guy, we immediately ordered another. We fell in love with it. This is our main go-to. I know there's like bigger square molds out there. As of right now, I'm still terrified to use them, but we will be using this mold today as we make our French lavender soap. So without further ado and enough of all of that freaking chatter, uh, let's go. Let's get this video fully started with our French lavender soap, um, kicking off our YouTube channel where it kicked off our soap, kicked off our new mold, kicked off our rebrand, and now kicking off this. Probably thinking to yourself at this nice little advantage point in time, oh my gosh, let's start making. So, oh my gosh, I will. So I'm gonna kick us off with our shea butter. We haven't really changed the recipe for our soap ingredient because as a lot of people say, the wheel's already invented. You ain't gotta reinvent the wheel. Or I guess the classical one is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's always good to kind of see what's out there, work on some new things. It's good to experiment. This one is just our nice little go-to. I don't know how many more times I'm gonna say that in the video is that this is our go-to. Might add a little freaking counter in the corner just to see. Honestly, if you are starting out, it is okay if you go one or two grams over. It's not gonna be the end of the world. You're just gonna still get a super moisturizing bar of soap. It's fine. Okay, this is where it's gonna get a little comical. We get this giant thing of coconut oil from, once again, Voyager. There's other, there are so many other places out there as well. So you can shop at Soap and More. Voyager is a good one. New Directions is really good for your essential oils. Uh, Windy Point as well. And then we have learned that in a lot of other excursions, there is a place in Ontario called Alpha Chem that we find is a lot as well, that we really, really enjoy working with for that. So now that we're done with that, that is our coconut oil and our shea butter. We're gonna go ahead and throw that on the burner. If you are interested in what our ingredients is and our step-by-step -step how to, we do have our instructions on how to make the soap on our Patreon. We're gonna be uploading all of our recipes and all of our ingredients on there. So any experimentation that comes out and turns out great will be located on Patreon. So this one will be one of our main ones and you can substitute essentially your fragrances for whatever fragrance. But as we go on through our videos, we'll tell you which ones are really good, which ones are fussy, which ones are a little bit temperamental and which ones that you got to pour in essentially like three seconds or it's done. For us with this burner, we're just going to go ahead let that bucket of butters and oil sit in there nicely and we are gonna go on with the rest of our pouring ingredients while this melts down. Okay, while she melts down in her nice little cooking pot, 
We're gonna go ahead and just get our fragrance oils ready to go. I don't even think, I use about 7% of our fragrance oil, sometimes 8% depending on how well and how strong I want the soap to be. Uh, this one will be a little bit one of our lighter ones because I know we are using the rest of our fragrance oil for it. So she's gonna be a bit light in the showers when we get to that one. These little guys right here, my makeup powders, I don't even need right now. They're just pretty much out here for a nice little display. Be like, look, it's distraction. I don't even think I'm gonna use this bucket. I'm probably going to use uh, what I have hidden behind here. So I'll put that on the side for now and bring out these. I got these literally from the dollar store. They are great for holding oils, great for pouring as well. Uh, they are freshly washed, so I'm just going to get the water out of them. We already got enough in this big bucket. And it's not even meaning... I'm not even going to say the name of it, but you can probably tell what it is. I like to start with the castor oil. It's one of the lighter ones. It's the less of the oils that we're going to do for it. Don't ask me the percentage that I throw in. I only know the number in grams. I've tried to convert everything to ounces for an easier time. Um, and let's just say I'm not too good at that portion. But I guess it should also be reassuring to say that you don't have to be a super mathematician to be a soaper and or bath bomb maker, sugar scrub maker, whatever you want to be. You just really have to enjoy it. And for us, my knowledge comes to the skincare portion of it, not the mathematical side. So thank goodness for soap calc. Okay, so our avocado oil, we just added in in case you didn't see that little bit rise up. I'm now going to go and add in our third main liquid oil, and that's going to be canola oil. For the soapers who are out there who go shopping at Costco for canola oil, you know where this baby came from. I just said it's from Costco, so if you need to write that down, write it down. If you need to watch and chuckle as I try to pour this, um, enjoy. Sometimes it's chaotic, sometimes we're okay. But I do like to say we did, we did start our company using olive oil, and then we had to go half and half with it because the price of olive oil started getting insane. And we found that canola oil has the exact same effect. It is one of the lighter ones. It is one of the cheaper oils out there. If you want to continue using olive oil, I think right now it's, um, it's super, super expensive. So your soap prices do have to go really far up to kind of equalize that out. From a small business standpoint, we just financially couldn't come to terms with going back to olive oil. Because I think right now in our area, it was $39.99 for three liters. That could change by the time this video comes out. It could be better, it could be worse. But I also believe that there is a shortage of olive oil out there right now too. So who knows at this point, we just go ahead with our canola oil. It gives us the same thing gives us a lot more for our money's worth. We essentially get that 17 liters for $43 compared to the olive oil that's $39.99. Okay, nice little bit of a fast forward action. Our oils have melted down. They are good to go, nice and liquidy. And you always want them under, I always say 120 for us, just because when you mix it in with this one, it's going to essentially level out to a nice little bit of a slightly warmer than room temperature, temperature. Does that make sense? Anyway, I always have it where I will just pour it right on into, and then this is a little makeup uh, artist trick if you are in the special effects world. I tend to do a little bit of a higher pour. I will not, I don't like to go that low or anything. I go for a high pour because it's going to help with air bubbles and air bubbles can leave these weird little dots in your soap when you cut them and i try to avoid that as much as possible so i hope this is also a learning experience and not so much of a oh my gosh he talks forever i just want to get as much information out as i possibly can just like this oil so we have a little hand blender right here this baby is my go-to we found this little cup i think it came with a magic bullet but this is like the perfect size for our hand blender 
just to stick into. So we call it our little soap cup. With our oils in there, it is now time to throw in our lye water. With our lye water, we also threw in a little bit of our sodium lactate, just because that's what's gonna help make the bar harder. We only do like one tablespoon. If you do four or five, you could flash your soap again and cause it for the, the lye crystals to go up and make it super, super lye heavy. All right, now that that's in there, we ain't gonna do anything too special. I'm just gonna go ahead and blend away. With these, our French lavender comes in three different colors. We like to say we do a nice little attempted swirl. Does it always work out? No. Do we do our best anyway? Sometimes. So, I had forgotten to record the fact that I had mixed in my colors and diluted everything and mixed up all of the oils. So this is our oil batch. We are using our French lavender. It's a really slow setup time, so I'm not super panicky right now. So it is time for the pour. And this is our big pot that we use. So this is our full blown, like nice lavender color that we have going on. And I will start by pouring in about half of this, and then I will do half of each of the of our jug colors and then I will go in and do it all again and then I will do the swirls. So let's go ahead and do our pour in our Winston and Walter mold. Hello July if you are watching. you have that while this sets up we're gonna go ahead and wrap it so it's nice and insulated overnight but this is our lavender bar of soap and we will be right on back to cut it all right we are on d2 it's been about 24 hours since we made this wonderful little baby loaf of soap so this is like i said before our winston and walter uh ba -ba. even what is this one Seven and a half pound. It's our seven and a half pound. I think I got it right from yesterday. Also too, Steven's in the studio today. Don't mind, or what was it in the Wizard of Oz? Don't look at the man in the curtain. He is working on a couple other things today while I go ahead, get this done. After this video, essentially, I'm still gonna be working on everything. However, with this Winston and Walter mold, we just go ahead and I use the term, and it's gonna sound so weird, but I use the term of burping. And it is a makeup artist special effects term when you want something out of the mold. So you just open it up, let the air into it. And then with the Winston and Walter molds, once your soap is nice and cured, that baby will just pop right on out. And you pretty much got all of that. So from here on out, we're going to go ahead, cut it, let it off to the side, and that'll be it. There we have it, our nice little French lavender right up front for everyone to see. Our little French lavender soaps ready to go. Like I said, they're gonna be curing for a couple weeks, then they will be back on the market scene. We are playing catch up with our business right now. But that being that, that is the end of our video. I, yeah, I think yeah. so. 
why not? Like we said, we'll have our recipe available on Patreon if you're just here to view and enjoy the nice little pretty stuff that we make. We'll take that too. Until then, like, subscribe to us. We can't wait to see you in the next one. And we're just so happy to be doing this finally again. And until next time, bye.